Hello, this is uh, Dylan from Horizon Coaching. Nice to see you. Uh, I'm a life coach, running coach, cycling coach. Um, yeah, somebody who can sort of help you to get to your horizon. Now, one of the ways a lot of us get to our horizon is, well, by either walking or, in our case, running. So um, I'm on Facebook. I'm in some, some groups on Instagram. And one of the questions that I keep on seeing coming up that, that, that is asked at least once a week is what's the best running shoe to buy? Or more specifically, what's the best trail running shoe to buy? Well, I have some thoughts on that. Now, let's start by taking a look at, well, my shoes. They kind of run the, you know, run the gauntlet different things there and I'm gonna go through so you understand and you have the you know some more information at least to think about what's the best trail shoe for you now there are ah, three maybe four parts to buying a shoe um, other than fit and we'll get to that the first would be how protective it is it what type of conditions are you running in number two would be the tread pattern so what does the bottom lug system look like what where is it going to work the best number three would be the cushioning how does it drive like a jeep or does it drive like a cadillac or and the last would be drop and i think this is where most people go oh, i don't know what that means so i'm just gonna go for it let me be clear let me show you well what what we're talking about or what others are talking about now drop goes from about zero to ten okay um zero would be something like well the luna as you can see this is about as simple of a running shoe as you can possibly get it's got a really you know simple sole strong good sole vibrant um doesn't have much cushioning very very thin there and as you can see, from here to here, it's the same. There's no, there's no change in thickness, so it's not really a high heel at all. Um, not much protection there, but yeah, it's a good shoe. It's a good shoe for, you know, for me, for shorter runs, for recovery runs, um, just to make sure that my tr stride is getting better and, and, and um, I'm keeping a neutral running stance. Okay, so that's the Luna. On the other end of the spectrum is, well... The Brooks Cascadia. The Brooks Cascadia has got some more cushioning, as you can see. Well, it's got a full cover for your feet, which is what you know most trail running shoes are going to have, with the exception of something like the the Luna. And the biggest difference is that from here to here, there's a 10 millimeter gain. Okay, so that means your foot is no longer running like this or landing like this. It's running like this and landing like that. What that means is you are protecting a little bit, if you're not very flexible, your Achilles. Why? Because you're not, you're not overstraining it, especially when you're doing like a fast uphill and maybe heel striking a little bit. You're not overly extending that Achilles on your, on your ankle. So this is the Brooks Cascadia. It's got some, some cushioning, you know, a pretty, pretty good tread, some lugs there. And um, yeah. Probably one of the, one of the most used, well-known shoes out there for a trail runner. Can't go wrong with your first trail shoe being a Brooks Cascadia. Now, um, you know the next, just another one to take a look at would be the La Sportiva Ultra Raptor. If you're running in a place that is really rocky and you just uh, you need something that's just a little bit beefier, you can see that the front end of this has got some some uh, rubber there to kind of protect the top of the shoe, which, you know, tends to take a lot of the impact when you're running, especially up uh, rocky and, and steep, uh, rocky conditions. It's got, you know, again, a pretty luggy sole. The, the lugs are pretty well spaced apart, um, you know, and it's, it's, it's a pretty rigid shoe. So that means you're, you're not going to feel much of the impact coming up. And this one has nine millimeters. So this goes from here to here, nine. Um, the next would be the Lickian. 
It says six. This is a good shoe up until about 10 kilometers. It's funny at 10 kilometers, your feet just start to get tired. It's, it's great for a short run. So, um, it's a very simple shoe, not, not a lot, not a lot going on with it. And it's really, really comfortable, but, uh, yeah, just, just not a really good, great long distance shoe. Um, the next, and I'm going to show you two at the same time, just to confuse you, are the Scott Kanabalu and the Hoka Challenger. What's interesting about these two shoes is that, well, they have the same drop. The drop from here to here is five on this and well, five on this. The difference being is, well, I was talking about it at the beginning, cushioning. This shoe has a substantially less cushioning. It's a pretty, you know, soft, easy to run shoe. It's great to run in, um, but you're going to feel a little bit more impact with less cushioning. Here, you got a lot of cushioning. Uh, Hoka is known for it. They, they give you a lot of cushioning and it's, it's, it's more like running in a Cadillac. You don't feel a lot, but you know, at the end of the day, your hips and your knees, you know, uh, aren't, don't feel as, as worked. Um, I think the more you run, the less it matters because your body adapts, but especially for the new runner who's, you know, probably asking the question, what shell shoe should I buy? Uh, Hoka's making some really great product out there. Something to think about. Now, if you like neutral running, uh, this is the company, one of the companies for you. This is a uh, ultra. It's, um, you know, it's got, got some good cushioning. Um, it's got a pretty good tread system here, but it's a uh, drop is zero. So these two are the same. Um, ultimately this shoe just has a cover and some more cushioning but these two are going to run the same. So they force you to run uh, in a neutral position where you're not, um, you know, heel striking. And uh, I think a lot of people really, really love these shoes if you get used to them. Um, and the, these come, the, the, the box actually comes with a warning that says, don't go out and run a hundred with these first. Why? Because we're so used to um, uh, running with or wearing shoes that have a, well, a drop, you know, that 10 to, to zero as opposed to zero to zero, you know? Um, so if we're so used to this, even in our everyday shoes, whether they're heels or cowboy boots or what have you, um, it takes some transitioning to do this, or you you're you are looking for an injury. You're saying, "Hey, I'm I want to hurt myself." So, eh, advice probably don't go that. The next thing that I would, the last thing I just want to say would be one of the things that that can be really really useful for somebody who's transitioning from, you know, road running to trail running, where you have a lot more uh, off camber conditions, one stretch that is really, really useful that my PT taught me when I was recovering from an injury, you know, um, probably running in the ulcers too much on the first try, is put your foot out, use PT tape, and just easy. Leg straight, just push, it works the calf, works the uh, IT band and really helps to strengthen your ankles, which is, you know, something to think about. Now, thank you for listening. Have a great day. And if you're looking for a life coach or running or cycling coach, email me. Thanks. Ciao.